Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take the divergence in cylindrical coordinates. Again, the mechanics are relatively simple, but we've taken a fairly more, a much more complicated example here. So they have three different terms. Notice when we take the divergence, we take that divergence of a vector quantity. So we, here we have the rho component, the phi component, and the z component. All right, notice that in each case, here we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to rho of rho times the rho component of v. Here the partial derivative of the phi component and here the partial derivative of the z component. So it makes sense to do it in three separate steps, otherwise we do a lot of writing. Just keep track of each of the terms that we do and then we add them all together at the end. Of course the quantity we end up with is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity when we take the divergence. All right, let's do the first one. We're going to multiply the rho component by rho and then take the partial derivative. So here we'll label this as the first term. Okay, so we'll label this f, the f term right here. So we have 1 over rho times a partial derivative with respect to rho of rho times this. So we take rho squared times 2 plus the sine square of phi. So times 2 plus the sine square of phi. Notice we now take the partial derivative with respect to rho, so this whole thing here becomes a constant, so this simply becomes 2 rho times the constant. So this is equal to 1 over rho times 2 rho, because that's the derivative of rho squared, times 2 plus the sine square of phi. Like this, and then when we apply that, so we multiply this, the rows cancel out, so we end up with 2 times that, or 2 times and eh, we'll write it, and we'll just multiply it together, so we end up with 4 plus 2 times the sine square of phi. We'll see later if we need to multiply that or not. All right, so that's the first component, that's the gradient of the vector v, and that's what we then get for the first component of that. Now the second component, so let's call this the second component right here, the second, the s yes component, and here we have 1 over rho times a partial derivative of the phi component with respect to phi, and the phi component is right here. So we end up with 1 over rho times a partial derivative with respect to phi of rho times the sine of phi times the cosine of phi. Now notice in this case, since we're taking the partial derivative with respect to phi, rho is a constant, so we can take it outside the derivative here, and then we have rho divided by rho that cancels out. So we can go ahead already and cancel those two out, just, they're just constants. And now we're taking the partial derivative of a product. So this is equal to the first times the partial derivative of this with respect to phi, the derivative of cosine is the negative sign, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is also the cosine of phi. So essentially here, we end up with, I'm going to switch them around, the cosine square of phi minus the sine square of phi. All right, so that gives us the second, and now let's do the third one. So here, let's do the third, we'll call it the t component. So for the third portion of this, we take the partial derivative of the z component with respect to z. So we need the partial derivative with respect to z of the z component of the vector, which is 3z. And that's simple enough. That simply is equal to 3. So there is the first answer. There's the second answer. Well, actually, that's the third, the first, and the second answer. In that order, I suppose. OK, now the total. So that's equal to simply the sum of the first plus the second plus the third component of that, uh, of that operation. So in this case, we end up with 4 plus 2 times the sine square of phi plus the cosine square of phi minus the sine square of phi and then plus 3. All right. So this is equal to 4 plus 3, that is 7 plus 2 times the sine of phi minus the sine of uh, sine square of phi minus the sine square of phi is just 1 sine square of phi plus the cosine square of phi and of course those two combine to be 1 so this is 7 plus 1 which is equal to 8 and that is the result of taking the divergence of this particular vector function.
So again, the mechanics are not that bad in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, even when we have a quite complicated vector function, you can see we could take each portion at a time, add them together, and that's then the result of the divergence of a vector quantity in cylindrical coordinates. And that's how it's done. See, I did a hard example. <laughs> Harder. Harder example. Yeah, not the hardest, but a little bit more complicated.